We're back on Inside Politics. Our guest today, Linda Peekshack from Lipscomb University. Uh, Linda, um, you've been involved with the minority and majority leaders in the Senate. Um, the relationship between those people and the president are always very critical. Uh, but times have changed on the Hill, compared, and for that matter, in the White House since the days you were there. Is the relationship such that, that Joe Biden can expect to be able to work with those leaders down there and get something done? I mean, Mitch McConnell says he may not even allow a vote on his some of his choices to be uh, cabinet members if he thinks they're too extreme. Well, that's right. I think there's several things to remember. There's only one time in history that the Senate rejected by vote uh, a cabinet member. And it's interesting that that happened to be a former senator, John Tower, who was voted down um, as Secretary of Defense. I think it's really important to understand the relationships that Joe Biden has uh, has maintained with senators on both sides of the aisle. The question will be whether or not his relationship with Mitch McConnell will continue the way it did when he was Obama's vice president. McConnell in his uh, memoirs talks about the way that he and Joe Biden were able to strike deals during the Ob Obama administration. He even has the line that he used, time to call Joe. So I think there's some hope that because of the amazingly tough challenges that the country is facing, that you will see a McConnell-Biden relationship lead to some action on what America needs right now. One reason that's important is if I look back to my experience in the Senate when Senator Byrd was majority leader and President Carter uh, was working with him, President Carter had to have a bipartisan support for his energy bills and for the P Panama Canal treaties. And Senator Howard Baker from Tennessee was key to those Panama Canal treaties. One of his staff members said that he was more responsible than ambitious because he was told at the time that if he voted for the treaties, he probably could not be the Republican nominee for president in the future. And his answer was, so be it. He put the country ahead of party. And I think that's what we need to see more of today. Linda, there is a concern that after what's happened uh, in this particular situation, that Joe Biden will be considered the efforts trying to be made to delegitimize him as president before he even takes office. I think you're also concerned that's become sort of a, uh, a recurring pattern for several of our presidents of both parties the last couple of years. What well, has been a trend? I mean, if you look at the Obama presidency, which was undermined from the beginning by the um, untrue birther conspiracy theory, um, primarily from our current president um, promoting that theory. And so there were people who did not believe that, that President Obama was a legitimate president because they believed he was born in Kenya. Um, if you look at the Trump administration, while the Democrats accepted the results of the election the day after, there was also a large resistance resistance, um, a very, a very resilient resistance that lasted throughout the four years. And then now with the uh, constant calls from the Republicans in support of the president questioning the legitimacy of this vote, we have President Bi President-elect Biden moving into a period where he may be viewed illegitimate as well. Uh, Mr. Biden talks a lot about trying to be the president for all Americans, but but the, the proof of that will be in the pudding and in his actions. He's going to be appointing his cabinet soon. Will one of those ex efforts to try to reach out to the other side on this be it perhaps putting some Republicans or people that lean in that direction or even independents into some of those cabinet posts? Well, I have no inside knowledge, but it seems to me that he has the challenge of um, showing that he means it when he says he wants to be the president of all the people. He has a challenge where he has promised bipartisanship. And it seems to me that putting a Republican or an independent in the cabinet and making them a key part of other parts of his, of his administration would go a long way in doing that. Um, the in, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, it looks like his first challenge for this is before he ever takes the oath of office, that is to try to get enough 
governors and mayors across the country perhaps buy into some sort of mass mandate. Nobody seems to want to do it. They think other people ought to do it instead. If he can't get a mass mandate put together by a lot of these people, what's his second choice on that? Because he's going to have to do something pretty quickly. The virus is raging. Well, I think he will keep trying on a mask mandate, either by persuasion, uh, well, obviously now it would have to be by persuasion to governors and, and mayors across the country. I actually think the coronavirus is going to be the reason that people put mask mandates in place. If you see the surge, if you listen to the scientists and the medical experts, we are headed into a dark winter. And Linda, it may thank you very much. That, I'm afraid we're out of time right now. I'm sure we'll have you back again because these, these issues are not going to go away for a while, but we appreciate you joining us again. Thank you. That's Inside Politics for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. The Zoo commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.